come to you this morning as a bearer of good tidings. You know what? I think for thousands of years our thinking had been contaminated by religiosity and by the unveiling of religious thought and the desperation of man had always been met by the desperation of God. And yet we hear so little about it. We, we, we're always so aware that we are not good enough. And I'm, I'm coming this morning to you with a word, you know, even this week as I sat down on my own in my study with this word, I just burst into tears experiencing a love that is beyond explanation. A love that causes trepidation in hell. A love that causes confusion for our enemies. And a love that, that ushers in a quality of life that, that, that you and I could, could have lived. That you and I can live every day of our lives. And I want to share with you this morning in the, in the unveiling of God's heart as we find it in the book of Hosea. Now, I call it Hosea, a scandal of God's love. Hosea, a scandal of God's love. Um, at, at this stage, we have the story of a man at, that is an absolute man of God. He is in the streets. He is uh, preaching about God and about God's kingdom and, and God's standards for man. And, and it's like nobody can reach to those standards and, and, and attain to that level of perfection on their own. And, and it's still true today. Nobody can. But, but as, as anointed by Holy Spirit, he comes out with a message that brings an absolute uh, desperation in man's heart. Will I ever be good enough? And then we discover something of a, of a story that had never been told and yet is the real story the relationship between God and Yitzrael, or the relationship between God and Kornei, God and you. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm so captivated by this. I, you know, there's so many things. The Word has got millions of God's thoughts captivated on page, captured on page. But I, 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 I stand before you this morning as one that that wants to share something specific with you. I'm going to read to you from Hosea chapter 2, verse 14 to 22. And this is basically a scandal of God's love. He says in verse 14, Therefore, behold, I will allure her, Israel, and bring her into the wilderness or into a quiet place, and I will speak tenderly to her heart. I will not speak to her head. Theology aims here. I will speak tenderly to her heart. You see, true love speaks here, touches here. There I will give her her vineyards and make the valley of Achor, or the valley of troubles, to her for a door of hope and expectation. That there where she bumps into all the troubles of her life, she will find a door and, a, and an access to success. She will sing there. Uh, Afrikaans and some of the older English translations say, she will respond to me there. And the response here is in a song. You know, when I'm happy, when you, when you watch little kids and they're playing and, they, and they're happy, they sing. They sing what they've heard on TV. They sing what mom and dad have taught them. But there's always a song when there's joy. She will sing there and respond as in the days of her youth. And as at the time when she came out of the land of Egypt, a specific time in history. And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me Ishi, my husband, and no longer Baali, my master. For I will take away the names of the Baalim, plural, the masters out of her mouth, and they shall no more be mentioned or seriously remembered by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant for Israel with the living creatures of the open country and with the birds of the heavens and with the creeping things of the ground. It almost sounds like Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 3. 
And I will break the bow and the sword and abolish battle equipment. The Amplified. Abolish battle equipment. Conflict out of the land and I will make you lie down safely. And I will betroth you. I will get engaged to you. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in steadfast love and mercy. I will even betroth you to me in stability and faithfulness. Our relationship will have something, some quality of, um, of substance, of steadfastness. Uh, it, it, it's like our relationship will be based on a rock. And you shall know, recognize and be acquainted with, appreciate and give heed to and cherish the Lord. You will surrender yourself to the Lord. What a place of relationship. And in that day, I will respond, says the Lord. I will respond to the heavens, which ask for rain to be poured on the earth. Beloved, if there's a prayer in our hearts this morning in South Africa, it's, oh God, please let heavens open up. Pour rain upon us. Oh Lord, come quench our thirst. Come quench the thirst of our earth. Fill our dams. And here he says, this, this uh, uh, relationship between uh, Hosea and myself will open the floodgates of heaven as far as rain is concerned. They shall respond to the earth, which begs for the rain it needs. And the earth shall respond to the grain and the wine and the oil. And these shall respond to Jezreel, who prays for a supply. And I will sow her for myself anew in the land. And I will have love, pity and mercy for her who has not obtained mercy and pity. And I will say to those who were not my people, you are now my people. And they shall say, you are my God. There comes a time of such security, such surrender that God and his people have become one. Uh, I read the story of a, a little boy. Uh, as he goes to school every morning, his dad uh, fixes him a lunch uh, consisting of salmis, sandwiches, and then he puts a little napkin on top of the salmis and he writes on there every morning, I love you, buddy. And, and after a few days of this, the boy came home with a sad face and the dad said, what's wrong? Did something go wrong at school? He says, no, dad. You know what? It feels like I throw away your love every day when I throw away that napkin. Mm -hmm. And this is the story of the ages of man's, uh, on the one side, my longing to have a relationship with him. On the other hand, it seems my inability to have a relationship with him. And in this chapter, we find an incredible story. It, it's, it's a story of Hosea, this man of God. And God tells him to go marry a prostitute. How would you love your pastor? Say you have a pastor, 25, 26 years old. An absolute man of God. And he announces his wedding. And he announces a marriage to a prostitute. And everybody in town knows her. This is exactly what God did to, did to Hosea. And I'm going to read to you verse 1 and 2 of chapter 1. The beginning of the word of the Lord for Hosea. The Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land has committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So immediately we know the context of this whole story is God's relationship with Israel and Hosea gets to play this like an act for the whole world forever to remember how God feels about Israel, how he feels about his people. I want to ask you this morning, in this love relationship, I discover his heart. My question is, does my heart, does your heart reflect God? Does it reflect his love? And, and so Hosea is married to Gomer, the prostitute, and, uh, and they have three children. 
And Hosea is never sure whether we, he, these three children are actually his. Because she's always hiding away. She's always running off to other men. She's always in a scandalous relationship in her old nature, running after men. And the three children, the first child's name is Jezreel. God will sow. The second name is Lo Ruhama. No more grace. So prophetic. If you keep on, if you continue in sin, there will be no more grace. Gomer and also Israel. Remember, she's, she's a, a, an absolute symbol, an absolute clear picture of Israel. No more grace. And then they have a third child, Lo Ami. They're not my people. They are not my people. Because of their sinfulness, because of their waywardness, God has to come to a place, draw a line in the sand and say, no more. And so these three children have names that reflect the prophetic path God is walking through with his people. And, 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 and here's the sad thing. I'm sure Hosea comes to a place where he asks the question, are these even my children? And, 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 and so God in himself must say, are these even my people? And I have wondered about this. I have asked myself the question, do I really, really reflect his heart? Am I, am I really his child? Does anybody even notice his characteristics in my life? And, and, and through the ages, religion has kept me in this place of wandering, this place of inferiority, this place of um, underachievement. My performance is just not good enough. Are these even my children? A question that must really trouble God. I say here, uh, and, 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 and my point is this, Gomer, unfaithful woman. Do I maybe recognize myself in this picture? Unfaithful woman, Israel, always wayward, always always running after other gods, always running after other important things. There, is, there, there are many rumors about her unfaithfulness. Am I prepared to look into my own heart? You see, when I'm confronted with God, I need to know. He is absolutely righteous. He's absolutely just. He's absolutely holy. But in this book, there is the, the revelation, the unveiling of a scandal. Let me share that with you. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness, a quiet place, and I will speak tenderly to her. Chapter 2 starts off with judgments against Gomer, against Yisrael. And so one after the other, God rolls it out. This is what I'm going to do to her because of her unfaithfulness, because of her unrighteousness, because of the wayward way in which she lives. I'm going to pour judgment upon her. And then suddenly the story changes. It's, if it, it's as if God cannot contain that love that age-old love that, that burns in his chest, in his innermost. He cannot contain it any longer. And he says, I'm going to take her and bring her into a quiet place. And I will speak tenderly to her heart. And God's saying to, to Hosea, Hosea, She's prostituting herself again. Go and buy her. And we know that he takes 15 pieces of gold. He takes some uh, uh, wheat and, and barley and things. And, and he buys her back. He doesn't have to. She is legally. She's his wife. 
Can we, can we measure the price? Can we unveil the gross an injustice of God dying for us. Paying a complete price to, to gain my love, to gain my devotion, to gain my worship. And God says to Hosea, go and redeem her, buy her, get her back. And then God says, I will betroth her to me. I will give her a ring. And she will be mine. Everybody would see that. Everybody would know this unfaithful woman will be my life partner. That rocks my boat, beloved. That truly rocks my boat. Let me share a few thoughts about Gomer's transformation and about the transformation that love, the scandal of love, will elicit in my being. He says, and there... She will answer me, some translations say. She will answer me, or she will respond to me. Or as the Amplified says, she will sing again as she did in the wilderness. In Exodus 15 verse 20, it says Miriam took the timbrels and she got the girls together. They just came through the Red Sea and, 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 and they took the timbrels and they started dancing before God and singing some worship songs to God, the Deliverer. He says, this prostitute. Now, now, let me tell you something. In 1982, I went to visit Floyd McClung. At that time, he was one of the directors of Youth with a Mission, YWAM. And he was stationed in, in uh, Amsterdam. And um, I went to him for 10 days. And I consider him surely as one of the greatest men of God that I ever, ever had the privilege of having fellowship with. Uh, he's six foot eight, so he's two, to two inches taller than me. But when you meet that man, you experience love, you experience grace, you experience God, you experience Jesus. And so one night he took me with him and uh, we're into the red light district where his workers would work day in and day night, uh, and, and, and night, day in and, day, and night. And, and here the prostitutes displaying the goods in the windows. And, and he'd walk past them and, and one after the other, they would get up, put a coat on and come out of their booth and hug him and call him dad, call him papa. Remember, these are all Dutch people. And I, I, I walked about three paces or three windows and, and I cracked. I, I fell on my knees on the ground and I, I wanted to vomit because of these women were so terrifyingly vulnerable. They were, it's like they were robbed of any dignity and they women would was taken from them. They just objects of lust. And I couldn't handle it. And Floyd took me by the hand and he started explaining to me, this one's name is this and this one's name is that. And he started explaining how they'd been ministering to them. I met on the base a girl called Yopi. And she had been ministered to for something like nine years, if I remember correctly. And she had come clean and she was out of drugs and, and, and addictions and she was following the Lord and she was helping the team. And I want to say to you something. A prostitute doesn't sing. Oh, they can sing, you know, play some music and sing after that. But there is no spontaneous song from their hearts. Because living that kind of life has robbed them of their dignity and their quality of life. Little girls, young ladies have become old ladies. God says, I will restore a song to her. You know what? We get so tired of trying to impress him that when we find the scandal of love applying to our own lives, 
in that moment, a spontaneous song bursts forth. And you and I become guilty of extravagance. <laughs> How God longs for his people to get out of this religious rut and come to this place of beauty. And then, then he says to Goma, you know, the second thing that's going to happen to you, you will not any longer call me Baali. You will call me Ishi, your husband. They will be, they will be relationship. I will not be one of your masters that pays for your, for your uh, actions. You will respond to me in love. Oh, beloved. I know this is a time, this is a very difficult time in our history. This is a time where we are, we are concerned about tomorrow and next year and next year's on our doorstep. And you know what? I know of one reason, one major reason that I have confidence for 2021. And it's the reality that he loves me, that his heart is sold out to me. You will no longer call me Baali, my master. The names of the Baali, the false gods, the false masters will no longer be found in your mouth because you will surrender and worship me. Gomer is transformed. Israel is transformed. You see, when, when Jesus shows up, you look at the life of Paul, a rabbi sold out to the, to the Hebrew thought, sold out to this kingdom. And he meets Jesus. And he calls him Kurios, Master, Lord. And he says, what will you have with me? And he says, come follow me. And Paul leaves everything instantaneously. And he follows after Jesus. He, how he has longed for this invisible God to become visible. And here is the moment in his life. And it's like Paul says to Romans 5, 17, I've left everything behind. And I'm following him, the master. My Lord. My King, my lover. Not only has Gomer transformed, not only has God placed in position the greatest love story ever to transform a nation. But listen to this in Hosea 2.17, he says, In that day I will make a covenant with the beasts of the field, the fowls of heaven, with the creeping things on the ground. I will break the bow, the sword, and the backlight of the earth, and I will make them lie down safely. God is about to transform nature because of a transformed people of God. I want to say to you, when we are transformed in our hearts, rain will come. Rain will come in your house. In other words, God's provision, God's spontaneous liberation from self-effort will come to your house. You will bear fruit like never before. And even as we pray, we will pray from a heart that is not trying to twist God's arm. We will pray from a heart that has already been made up. I want to give rain to the earth. I want to draw you into this place where you understand. Not only will my heart be transformed, not only will South Africa be transformed, but nature will be transformed because of the scandalous love of our Messiah, Yeshua Hamashiach. I bless you. Beloved, I bless you. May this word have entrance into your, in, in your life, in your heart. Let's pray together. Father, it's my cry that we will hear these words and it will fall in our hearts that you will speak tenderly to us today. It, it is my desire, my Father, that we will not only hear you with the hearing of our ears, but with the understanding of our hearts so we can respond in worship and adoration. You are worthy, Jesus. We love you, Lord.
because you first loved us. Father, stir in us. Holy Spirit, stir in us the hearts of lovers, of surrender, of yielding, that we would stop living for ourselves and experience you as a bridegroom that loves us severely, scandalously, without stop. In Jesus' name, amen.